You're welcome back to the conversation. Now, away from the Republic of South Africa, President of Sierra Leone, Julius Matabio, has issued a directive ordering the Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone to adopt the country's old proportional representation voting system. In 1996, the country conducted its parliamentary elections under a proportional representation system where parliamentarians got elected based on the percentage of the popular votes secured by their parties nationwide, so long as they got more than 5%. But in 2008, Sierra Leone introduced single-member constituencies with MPs elected on a first-past-the-post basis, where the candidate with the highest number of votes is declared winner. Now, the Electoral Commissioner, Mohamed Kone, said the decision to go back to the earlier PR system followed a presidential directive in line with the country's constitution. He said because the country's constituency boundaries had expired and could not be redrawn within the constitutional least slated period ahead of the next election, the boundary delimitation exercise which had commenced is halted with immediate effect. The main opposition, All People's Congress Party, has said it is considering a legal challenge to the move which the APC's representative, Sidi Yaya Tunis, describes as ill-advised. And now joining us for this conversation, we have Abdimalik Bangura, PR and media consultant, all the way from Sierra Leone, Freetown. Thank you so much for joining us in the conversation. Thank you all. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. So first off, Abdimalik, I mean, with this news, what has been the people's reaction and even your own reaction to the government of Sierra Leone decision to drop its current voting system and return to proportional representation just how many months did the next elections? Well, it comes um, in the first um, various criticism from opposition supporters who are decrying this um, change at this particular moment in time when we are like um, eight months to um, our June presidential election for which President Julius Madabu is seeking a re-election. Um, it's safe to say that... Um, the current composition in our Sierra Leone House of Parliament does not favor the current ruling party. And we've seen a lot of constitutional conundrum in the House of Parliament. There was a time even the election of the Speaker of Parliament was, um, was, um, was not, um, the main, main opposition did not participate in the election of the current Speaker of Parliament. We had issue of constitutional instruments being torn in Parliament, we had issue of opposition MPs attacking um, the ruling party um, um, officials, even in the in the well of Parliament. I think that emanated from the fact that um, Sierra Leone, in the Mano River Basin, is the only country where the main opposition has majority in the House of Parliament. Mm. As we are now, we have a 130, 136 um, elected, 130. 132, 132 elected members of parliament, of which the main opposition has 58, and the ruling party, the main opposition has 59, the ruling party has 58, a third party called the National Grand Coalition has four, and the Coalition for Change Political Party has eight MPs. So the issue is that um, even as we are now, Going to the next election, being that Sierra Leone is an ethno-regional and ethno-political um, um, divided nation, it is but certain that the main opposition will still have majority in the House of Parliament because previously, following the, the, the 2018 election, they won 68 seats and the ruling party won 49. So they, they, it was through a court order that um, 10 members of parliament were removed from the main opposition and handed in to the ruling party. And that was how the ruling party got majority in the House. But well, first coming forward to the 2018 election, there was a by-election in Tonkolili, which was uh, on a seat that was held by the ruling party, and the main opposition won it again. So as we are now, the main opposition has the majority of seats in parliament. I think the ruling party wants to prevent that because looking at the district block system, it favors them a lot. 
Let's look, for instance, Western Urban Rural District or Western Urban, Western Area Urban District, which has the capital Freetown. Western Area Urban District has been a heartland and stronghold of the ruling All People's Congress Party. In 2012 election, the main opposition by then, which was the Sierra Leone People's Party, that is currently now in power, had over 200,000 votes. Mm. But, and the ruling party had about um, 400,000 votes. But we found out that of all the 29 constituencies in Freetown, all of them were won by the All People's Congress Party. Okay. So you see, there are, there are cases a party might, do, might, might have done very well with regards to getting votes in a particular district, but cannot win the single member constituency because of the threshold, being that some may even lost it by just 1,000. You have MPs losing seats mm -hmm. by just 12 votes. The last time we had an issue of an MP losing a seat by 112 votes. Okay, uh, uh, Malik, uh, uh, I think please uh, permit me to bring in our second uh, guest uh, for this discussion. Uh, we have Kodafo, who's also joining from Freetown in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Cody. Uh, um, Godwin, how are you? Uh, this is Benga. We're happy to have you. So I'll just go straight into it. What are the issues with the first past the post system and why is the government of uh, president julius bio uh, changing the system uh, what are its political implications why is it changing uh, the voting system to return to the old one of proportional representation uh, as far as i'm concerned uh, i don't think um, it's a change of any system because um, we first of all had the first pr system in 1996, uh, that time it was Dr. James Jonah who was the National Electoral Commissioner. And uh, during that period, we actually had the 1991 uh, Constitution suspended as per the NPRC uh, decree. So um, it was difficult to reach out to specific areas within the country because the world was, the world was still raging. So we had the PR system. Uh, in, nine, in 2002, we, we followed suit. Uh, so saying that uh, it is a change in the process, I don't, I don't look at it from that perspective because it is constitutional. And uh, the constitution says that uh, in a situation we are in, uh, we don't have constituencies delimited, delimited definitely, uh, the PR system can be recommended. So why wasn't it used in the last general elections that got President uh, Julius Martabeo into office? Okay, uh, already the 2015 uh, constituency and it's 2015 uh, population and housing census paved way for the constituency level elections because they had already done boundary delimitation for constituencies and wards. So definitely that will not have worked because we already had the constituencies. But uh, quite recently, we had this 2021 midterm uh, census that was organized, that was conducted. And as per the 2021 midterm census, definitely the figures do change. And if the figures do change, definitely there was going to be boundary delimitation. But in August of this year, mm. you know, the Electoral Commission announced that they were going to start a boundary delimitation. But that could not go further because we had some hitch, you know, political hitch, wherein we had this uh, uh, demonstration, the nationwide demonstration sort of, and uh, the process was stalled. And if we don't have uh, the boundary delimitation done, definitely there was going to be some new constituencies, there was going to be some, might maybe some new districts as far, you know, uh, as we were uh, foreseeing. Okay. So if that is not done, definitely the only system that can work well at this moment is the PR system. Okay, uh, Abdul Malik, as you rightly said, it's about eight months to the elections and we saw the opposition now kicking against it and considering 
a legal challenge. Now, let's come down to the Electoral Commission of Syria alone. Now, it started its voters' registration in early September. How prepared is the Commission for this whole exercise? And what's the okay, response the, like? The, are, are people coming up? What's the turnout like? One of my colleagues just now, and I think uh, to some extent it does not reflect the general view of Sierra Leonean. Because right from what he was saying, he said that the Constitution makes provision that the event that there is no constituency in the country, then a district PR system could be used. But as it is now, there is a constituency in there are constituencies in Sierra Leone. Even from my analysis, I already told you that there are 132 elected constituencies in Sierra Leone. So they are pegging everything on the fact that there was a protest in August 10 that prevented them. To me, and that particular um, 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 reason is completely out of place because you don't need to go to the streets to delimit constituencies. These are things that are done officially in offices. You can even do it on laptops and all. So for them to have even made such, such um, 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 excuse what he, it was itself completely uh, um, um, outrageous because that, that's the... That's so, that's so what do you think is now. the reason the behind this? Uh, some observers have said, you know, he's doing it so he can secure his chances in the next general elections. What do you make of this, Abdul Malik? No, pardon? Uh, what do you think is the reasoning behind the ruling uh, political party going ahead to uh, change the voting system? Some have accused President Beer of uh, trying to secure his chances in the next general elections. Uh, what do you make of this? Exactly. You see, President Beer has had a strange first time five years in governance mm. because he did not get majority in the House of Parliament. Is now a president, but even as we are now in our county, the main opposition has, has majority in our House of Parliament. So going into an election when the opposition has majority in the House of Parliament, and knowing fully that in 2018, the main opposition directly won 68 seats. That was sure. They won 68 seats, while the ruling party only won 49 so if you are going into an election in this particular uh, setting, taking into consideration that in Sierra Leone, people vote on ethno-regional and ethno-political way. There is no way, even here, yeah, you may do very well in another person's home, but you cannot win constituencies in single members because there are some constituencies, it is certain a party can win it, no matter what. So that's the issue. So if he, even if it's... Go, he, he, it goes into the 20, 2023 election in the manner and way in which the constituencies are set in Sierra Leone. It is obvious that the, the whole opposition are going to get majority. So that's the issue. So they are now using the district block system because if they vote in the district block system, you may have instances for which the ruling party will have seats in Putloko, in Makeni, in Bombali, in places that they never had seats, except through a proportional way, because they look at the percentages. That's how it works. You will look at the percentage of political party scores in a particular district, then you allocate seats to that person. It is not a word, but there is one key issue that has, that has prompted the attention of various um, um, human rights activists in Sierra Leone, that this particular system kills the issue of independent people going for seats. Okay, you know, okay, okay from that independent people going seat. for seats, Abdul Malik, let's take a, a Paul's view on all that preparedness for the election and uh, this independent candidacy for these elections. What are your takes on this? You can independent candidates cannot. So, uh, that question is directed to Fodi uh, Kamara, uh, please. Hi. Um, um, the, the issue around uh, independent candidates, uh, it is clear from the, what the ECSL has uh, uh, released that uh, they are going to allow independent candidates to uh, buy for, uh, for parliamentary seats, you know, in, you know at per district uh, uh, PR system. So if Malik is saying that uh, this is going to affect uh, 
independent candidates, then I'm afraid. I don't know where he's getting his uh, information from. And uh, secondly, he mentioned that uh, the majority of uh, citizens are not happy about the PR system. He cannot provide any form of uh, statistics for that. There's no evidence that uh, the majority of uh, 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 citizens are not happy about the PR system. Uh, it's just speculations from them as opposition. You know, uh, so for me... Of which you PR also system, don't have the statistics also to know if people to are pleased with this PR system, right? Yeah, we, 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 we cannot tell from any statistics for now. But to say for anybody, or any civil society uh, uh, advocate to come out and say that uh, the majority of people are not happy about the PR system is a lie. There's a blanket lie, and I don't want to buy that, and I don't want to. to, to I, I'm ready to contend, uh, okay. uh, to contest that. And uh, the issue around the expiration of uh, constituencies, we know that the lifespan of every parliament lasts for five years, and after that, there should be some form of boundary delimitation because the the the, the, the populations would have changed from district to district, from constituency to constituency. So definitely there is need for boundary delimitation. And if we don't, we've not gone through a boundary delimitation, definitely the only system that will work is the PR system. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm afraid this is where we drop the anchor on today's conversation. Uh, thank you very much, Abdul Malik Bangura and Fodi Kamara for joining us uh, from the capital of Syria and Freetown. Uh, we do appreciate you. <laughs> contributions to this program. Uh, I, I, th I think this is uh, the point where we're just living for the law courts to take uh, to take note of because one exactly. side is saying that uh, there have been boundary limitation, another side is saying that there are not boundaries for this. I guess I the people can make their conclusions too. Uh, I mean, draw their conclusions from all of this. Uh, thank you very much for being a part of the program. In the first half, we did look at the political developments in South Africa and we just concluded our conversation on the change the voting system in the Republic of Sierra Leone. I'm Benga Aboa. Thanks for being a part of this. I am Rita Modi. I did join us again on Wednesday for another edition of The Conversation. Bye-bye.